Hello, God bless you. I hope everyone is having a great day. This is Brother David. I want to bring out a beautiful scripture found in the book of Psalms, chapter 143, verse 8, which says, Cause me to hear thy loving kindness in the morning, for in thee do I trust. Cause me to know the way wherein I should walk, for I lift up my soul unto thee. Where he says, Cause me to hear thy loving kindness. He's asking for the voice of thy loving kindness or thy mercy and favor. Permit me to hear the, the addressing me in the language of kindness and with the assurances of mercy. Where he says in the morning means early, speedily, with the first rays of the morning. Let it be as it were the first thing in the day, the first thing that is done. The idea is not that he would wait for another day, but that he would step in as the very first act, that the Lord would step in as when one enters into the day. When the morning appears, in the face of the morning, for in thee do I trust, I have no other confidence or ground of reliance, but I have confidence in thee, Cause me to know thy way wherein I should walk. The safe way, the way in which I may find safety. David here is asking to know the will of God for his life. The darkest hour just before the dawn. The loving kindness of the Lord would cause all this gloom to fade away. David had promised that he would walk in the will of the Lord. If he just knew what the will of the Lord was. Trusting means believing in or hoping. David believed in God and he hoped that God would send him help. In the morning it could also mean early or figuratively the dawning of the hope and salvation. In the way wherein I should walk, the way at once of duty and safety, I lift up my soul or my desire. Cause me to hear thy loving kindness in the morning, for in thee do I trust. His utter trust in God gives him a claim to be heard and helped. Cause me to know the way wherein I should walk. He's saying, illuminate me so that I may perceive the course which I ought to follow. Make thy way straight before my face. For I lift up my soul unto thee. Basically what this is saying here is what Jesus repeats and commands us in the Gospels. To not do our will, but to do his will. So over the past couple of days we've been talking about how the promises of God are sure. That you can rely on the promises of God. Unlike the promises of man that will fail, God's promises will never fail. And we talked about how God will never leave us. How he's right there with us. How like I said I described it as. It's like a parent with a child. The child is holding the parent's hand. The parent is has a child's hand. And is leading the child out. The, the, the parent's right there right beside the child. Holding his hand. Lead, lead him and him out. That's what God's doing for us. He's literally right there right beside you right now. And we talked about yesterday how. All things work to the good for those who put their love and trust in the Lord. And it says, but do the will of the Lord. And this is what David's talking about here. And this is the heart of the Lord right here. Is that we, and Jesus talks about it in the Gospels. We should be seeking what the Lord wants us to do each and every day as he says here. He wants to hear from the Lord. He wants to know which way to walk each and every day. Jesus tells it this way to die to ourself, to crucify our flesh daily. That's what we need to be doing daily is to, to, to not seek our way, but to seek what the Lord wants. And that's how we're fulfilling his will for our life. We're seeing what he wants us to do, and we're following what his direction or his in the way in which he wants us to walk. Not the way we want to walk. And you know for us who. 
who comes to the saving knowledge of Jesus, you know, sometimes this may be a little hard for us to do sometimes. We have to remind ourselves that we are the Lord's. And to follow him, Jesus says, we have to die to ourselves, die to our wants and desires, to seek the Lord and to seek his direction. So as we see the world falling down all around us, we need to be putting our faith and trust in the Lord. And knowing that no matter what we go through, the Lord has us in, the, his, in his hand. He's going to never leave us or forsake us. He's going to be right there with us. All we have to do is put our trust in him and seek what he wants us to do. Seek his direction daily. Just like he says here. He wants to hear from the Lord. Because he trusts in the Lord. He wants the Lord to show him his, in the way in which he will walk. He says he lifts up his soul unto him. He lifts up his desires. We only need our desire to be what God wants us to do. What God's will is. So as we see all the world crashing down around us, as we know that the coming of the Lord is so soon, we need to just be seeking the Lord daily. Dying to what I want, what, what you want, and seeking what the Lord wants. And that was when I played games with God for over 20 years, claiming I was a Christian. You know, I, I used to, I would say that I loved the Lord, but I did what I wanted to do. But I come to the result, realization one day that I couldn't do this on my own, that I need the Savior. I needed to stop doing it my way because my way wasn't accomplishing anything. And start doing it his way. And when we, when we start doing things his way, not our way, then we grow into this intimate, close relationship with the Lord where he leads us where he wants us to go. So if you need some direction, if you're going through a valley, sickness, depression, disease, addiction, Whatever trials, tribulations, temptations, or struggle you may be going through right now, seek the Lord. Call out to Him. Tell Him you ask. Put your trust in Him. Say you want to know what way to go. Lead me out of this, Lord. And trust that the Lord's going to lead you right out. And if you don't know Jesus today, if you only intellectually know who Jesus is, you know what He did on the cross, but you don't have a personal relationship with Him. You don't seek. To know what way the Lord wants you to go today. I want to introduce you to Jesus. Because as the world falls in around us. The only hope that we have in this world. Is the Lord. So I want to introduce you to Jesus today. Because you may not actually know who he is. But you don't talk to him. You don't try to get to know him. You don't pray to him. You don't read the Bible. So I want to introduce you to Jesus right now. The gospel in a nutshell. Is that because of the fall from Genesis chapter 3, sin entered the world. Sin creates the wall that separates all of us from God. This is confirmed in Romans 3.23, which says, All of sin and fall and short of the glory of God. Romans 6.23 says the wages of sin is death, meaning because of our sin, not one of us is worthy of going to heaven. But as we see in John 3.16, God loves you so much that God, the Son, Jesus, left heaven became a flesh and blood human, fully God, fully man. 2 Corinthians 5.21 says Jesus lived a perfect sinless life, but on the cross Jesus became sin for us to pay our sins. Meaning when Jesus was on the cross, Jesus put on our sins so that when we believe the gospel of sins are saved, then we put on his righteousness. And now when God looks at us, he doesn't see our sin, now God sees Jesus. The gospel message is 1 Corinthians 15, 1-4. Jesus died for our sins, was buried, and rose again from the dead on the third day, according to the scriptures. Romans 10, 9 says, If you confess Jesus with your mouth and believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, then you'll be saved. And as we see at the end of John 3, 16, whoever believes in Jesus will have eternal life. Romans 10, 13 says it this way, For whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Jesus says in John 14, 6, that he is the only way to heaven. There's not multiple ways. There's only one way to heaven. And Jesus is 
is the only way to heaven. Jesus' blood is the ticket to heaven. Jesus' blood is what bought the ticket into heaven. Jesus' blood is what covered our sin debt, past, present, and future. Jesus' blood is what broke down that wall that separates us from God. So if you sincerely believe and surrender your life to Jesus, meaning you're not just saying words to try to please someone, or you're not looking for a get out of hell free card, but you really believe in what Jesus did for you on the cross and you truly want to live for him now, then you'll be saved. This is Jesus' free gift to you, and all you have to do is accept it because we can't earn our way to heaven. We can't be a good enough person. We can't do enough good deeds. And when you stand before God, it won't matter how much you've given to charity. It won't matter that you think that you're a good person, that you never robbed or killed anybody. Because our works, our deeds are not good enough to get us into heaven. Ephesians 2, 8, 9 says, It's by grace that we are saved through faith. It's not of ourselves. It's a gift of God, not of works. Lest any man should boast. Meaning, we can't earn our way to heaven. We don't even deserve Jesus. But God loves us enough that he made a way. And we always follow the gospel with the warning of Jesus' imminent return. Because right now you can personally know Jesus for one day soon. And how soon, we don't know, but complete hell on earth will come. We can see it coming. The world's getting darker by the minute. The Bible predicts that the shadow of the tribulation is so big right now, we can barely see light around it. And one day soon, the restrainer who is holding hell back will be removed. Then the tribulation will begin, and it will be a time of terrifying supernatural events, scarier than any movie you've seen or nightmare you ever had. Each day will get progressively worse. It will be literal hell on earth. Some signs that will happen during the tribulation are that someone will rise to power. With all the answers, simply put, he's a dictator empowered by Satan, and he'll rule the whole world and set up a one-world government, a one-world currency, and a one-world religion. And in this satanic system, you cannot buy or sell or eat unless you're part of the system. And he will confirm a worldwide peace deal that will allow Israel to build their third temple. And we know that when Israel gets the ashes of the red heifer, which purifies them to offer sacrifices, and they will start the daily sacrifices. And we know that the Antichrist will stop the daily sacrifices at the, at the midway point of the tribulation. In the tribulation, there may, may be some sort of global social credit system set up where if you're good this week, you can get you a burger or whatever it may be. But right now, before the tribulation, you can freely buy, sell, and eat whatever you want. But in the coming tribulation, the freedom to jump in the car and go get whatever you want, soon that time will be over. We'll know that we're in the tribulation when we see Israel offering their daily sacrifices, but until we see all this, we're not in the tribulation yet. But it is coming. Bible prophecy is jumping off the page. And I want you to know Jesus personally before all hell breaks loose. Because right now, before the tribulation starts, we're under the age of grace. Meaning that right now is the easy way to come to Jesus. All you have to do is sincerely believe in what Jesus did for you on the cross and surrender your life to him. Accept Jesus' free gift to that free ticket into heaven, but after the tribulation begins, the age of grace will be over. And that'll be the hard way, and you have to do more than just believe in Jesus. You have to die for Jesus. But I love you, and I don't want that for you. So right now, before the age of grace is over, please turn to Jesus today. We believe that when their strength is removed, one day millions will disappear along with all the children around the world. And when you hear that all these have vanished, no, no matter what may be said, because based on what we're seeing, they may use aliens to explain away what happened, but know that if you don't see me, or hear my voice that these videos are not uploaded. And if all the children around the world are gone along with millions of others, know that Jesus took us home in the rapture. You know, many have different opinions on the rapture. We're not here to argue about the timing or the reality of the rapture. These theologies really don't matter. One thing is for sure, the Bible's clear. We're not guaranteed tomorrow. We're not guaranteed our next breath. And even if we are here to see some of the hell that's coming, who knows how long we will be able to survive. But know that the end is here. So if you don't know Jesus personally, please take the time to get to know him today while you still have the time. So whatever excuse you may be telling yourself right now, don't put Jesus off. We're not guaranteed our next breath. There's no guarantee you'll live to see the sunrise tomorrow. Today is the day of salvation. In the description box, we have a link to the ABCs of salvation and a sample prayer. These are just templates of what you can say. It's not a repeat after me. There are no magic words. This is just an outline. Of what he can say, the words are not important. It just needs to be a sincere prayer from your heart that you can't do this on your own, that you need a Savior. My prayer you got something out of this, but don't take my word for it because no one on this earth has the answers you're looking for. Only God does, and you only receive your answers through prayer and by reading the Bible. And it's so very important to read the Bible for yourself. 
just picking random verses and listen to someone read or preach for a few minutes. You're not going to get the full picture. They can't even scratch the surface of what's in the Bible. So read and discover the stories for yourself. And the Bible will strengthen you and help you to face any and every trial, tribulation, temptation, or struggle you may be going through right now. In the description box, we have several sources of, to read the Bible along with an audio Bible if you want a physical Bible. And if you need prayer or have a praise report, please reach out to us. We want to stand in agreement and pray for your needs. We also want to praise Jesus right along with you for what he's doing in your life. Well, I pray you got something out of the video today. If you did, give God glory. I can't wait to see the Lord has for us tomorrow. I love you. Jesus loves you. God bless you. I hope you have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow or see you in the clouds.